Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. So this is part two of Emmy's UV Texture Probe. I'm going to be uh, combining it with uh, Frederick's Dex Particle Packing Kit. We're going to put some scales on this snake. So this is an advanced tutorial. Watch um, part one of the UV uh, Texture Probe first so you can kind of understand how that works. I'm going to go through it quite a bit faster here. And I think I'll make an assembly at the end so you can save the assembly. <clears throat> and use that instead of having to recreate this rather complex node graph every time you load up Moto, because even I'll forget how I did it, and I'll need this assembly at some point, because it's just that's just you know nature of humans, right? You do something, even if you're the one who made the tutorial, you forget how to do it eventually. So it's nice to be able to save these assemblies out and reuse them. Okay, so this snake, if I want to do some proper um, attribution here is from Sketchfab. I downloaded it. It's the high detailed snake from mm, Al Diesel, AI Diesel. Not sure which of it's Al or AI, but uh, great looking snake. I think it's a boa constrictor, perhaps a python. I would have known this a few years ago. I do have a biology degree, but I can't remember. I think it's a, maybe it's a boa. And we're going to uh, bring it into Moto. I export it as a USDZ and import it into Moto. And um, yeah, so let's put some particles on here. So this is, I'm gonna do a little, kind of a cool trick first before we get into the UV texture stuff. I think you'll like it. So if I start adding uh, particles from the DEX kit, so if I do add item and I go over to um, DEX and I say we want to do some volume or some surface distribution. By the way, we can do curve distribution in the upcoming DEX kit. I've got a, a beta here. I'll do some videos for that when it comes out. Like he, uh, Frederick's still hard at work on this. He's got some really cool features and updates coming. But we're just going to do surface distribution. And we can see that popping into the scene here. So let's open up our schematic and sort of take a look at this. And then I'm going to just get a, a unit sphere. So hold shift and get a one meter sphere here. Now remember in DEX, you want <clears throat> your prototypes to fill up that one meter space. And so it has like a base idea of how big the prototype is before it does its packing. And I'm just gonna hide the sphere because we don't really need to see it. And then I'm going to drag all three of these guys in the schematic. I think I can hide this guy here and hook things up. We've got our surface distribution node, which is gonna create the particles. We've got our sphere, which is gonna to go to our replicator. We've got our snake, which is gonna plug into our surface mesh. So it's gonna pack onto the snake. I need a replicator in the scene here. So it'll marry up the particles that are being created and the prototype sphere there. So particle source will be dex and sphere will be prototypes like that. And so on surface dis distribution, if I want to go from preview to raycast, it's going to use, um, by default, the ray projection is just uh, a planar. So if I just move that up, you'll see that packing onto the snake there, right? So we've got some really big spheres. So I'm gonna sort of shrink down our size. The scales are quite small. We'll just do like maybe um, a minimum size of uh, one millimeter and a mid max size of three millimeters for now. And I just have a few on here, but that's fine. We'll just, we can crank that up to like 5,000 or so. And you'll see how this is, um, I'm gonna increase the uh, multiplier as well to sort of fill in the, the spaces, maybe up to 10,000. It's really fast, whoops, not 1,000. 10,000. One of the problems you'll see here is that the planar projections or the projections, um, kind of like a texture projection, it's, it's just like spraying particles straight down, right? And I can take my planar projection here, my ray projection, I can, you know, I can rotate and I can scale it but the snake is already like all curled up, right? So there's no real projection, even if I change this to something like um, spherical, that's gonna give me everything I want on this. So even if I go to spherical, you know, I see like some parts of this are occluded. So I can see I'm getting some particles, let me just sort of um, go to my service distribution and turn off display packing there. You can see like, you know, I'm, I'm getting some, some, you know, particles sprayed there, but it's occluding the snake. And I get some coming in here from the outside of the sphere, but it's not getting the inside. So I'm not getting the particles uh, onto my snake the way I want it. What I really want is a straight snake. And I want to do like a, just a projection along the length of the snake, either a cylindrical 
or uh, like a box projection to get um, all the parts of the snake at once and not have this problem where the snake's already deformed. So this is kind of a, just a fun part of the tutorial. I'm gonna straighten out the snake and I could do it really fast um, using some of Moto's deformation tools. So let me just turn off all this stuff. In fact, I'll just uh, unhook it for now just to make sure it's not calculating in the background. Okay, so I'm going to press N for a new mesh item over here in the item list. And we'll just call this um, source curve and press N for another one. Call that target curve. And I'm gonna draw my source curve. I'm gonna just go to the top here. I'm gonna grab, um, let's see, like a curve tool. Let's just go to wireframe. And I'm just going to quickly outline the snake here, right? So just down the middle. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just gonna kind of now. Normally, I would check and see if I can just grab like a edge loop and convert it to a curve that goes down the middle of the snake. But I think this guy was scanned in, and there's a few sort of janky um, triangulation uh, parts of this, of, of this snake here. So let me sort of get through this really quickly. Whoops. Nice and smooth. Click. The yellow one there, so what's next? Okay, looking good. Sometimes these USDZ files, USDZ, USD files come in with some um, stray points or points that aren't uh, um, merged. So if I grab my snake here, I'm just gonna do a little mesh cleanup, make sure everything's good there. Okay, it's all good. So you'll notice my um, curves are really, my curve is really low here. So I wanna go back to my uh, source curve and just move that up into the snake. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, something kind of like, like this. I don't think I need to actually change it in Y along there. I think this is probably good enough. Our deformer is gonna, gonna pick it up. And let's take a look at this uh, source curve and just see how, how long it is. And I'll use a curve probe since this is a probe video. So I've got a curve probe node here. You can just add one if you don't have one in the scene and grab my source curve and drag it in, connect it to the curve right there, select my curve probe and look at the channels. And so this curve is length about 2.06 meters, okay? So it's a little bit longer than the snake, but the snake's about 2.06 meters. So two meter snake, so yeah, I don't know, sounds like a bow constrictor to me. And I'm gonna make a target curve now, that's 2.06 meters. So I'm gonna turn back my grid on, maybe go to wireframe and uh, select my curve tool here, turn on snapping by pressing X, I got grid snapping. So we'll just do like like that, okay? And let's just see how long this one is. We want it, what, you know, 2.06 is what we want. This curve is just one meter, so we want it twice as long. I can actually just take this uh, guy here and drag it out and uh, with this active, and I can just kind of see how long it is, 1.6. Turn off snapping, let's just keep going. 2.06, okay, 2.055, just a little more. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, get it close. No, 2.06, all right? So this curve is basically the length of this curve unwound or stretched out. So I'm just gonna sort of overlay this guy on this guy, something like this. So the curves are sort of matched up. We'll just go to the side view, make sure they're matched up in Y as well. Looks pretty good. Back to the top here, just, you know, kind of like this, right? I think we're pretty good here. We've got our straight curve and our curvy curve. And now we're going to turn our snake back on, go to the advanced viewport. And I'm going to add a spline deformer to the snake. And so you can either go to the stack here and hit tab and, and add a spline effector. Is what it's called, spline effector, right there or we can just add it from the uh, def deformation tab over here. Deformers, spline effector. So before you do that, I'm actually gonna rebuild my curves to have more vertices. So right now, my um, source curve has you know about 45 vertices, while my target curve has just these two. So we'll just do a quick curve rebuild on here, mesh up. Curve rebuild, let's do like 50. We're gonna have 50 on both of them. Source curve as well. Add another curve rebuild mesh up. And we'll do 50 on there. So um, now we have the same number of vertices on each one of these guys, right? 50. And go back to my snake. And we just turn off verts here. 
I'm going to add the spline effector to the snake. Now, it's on the Z axis right here, so we want it on the Z. We want the length to be um, about 2.06, I believe. We want 50 um, uh, different uh, control points on our spline effector, okay? So it's gonna match up our curve. So I hit okay, and it's gonna add that to the scene. There it is, and that is connected to the snake. Now what we wanna do is access um, on the spline effector tab here, we have two different drop downs, source curve and target curve. So I'm gonna select the source curve here, the one we call it source curve, and then I'm gonna select target curve, the one called target curve, and boom, we've got a straight snake, or mostly straight. It's a little bit, a little bit, not quite, and we can work that out a little bit if we want to. It's also flipped, so let me just go to my uh, target curve here and select the base mesh and F to flip it. So I can, you know, tweak this a little bit. I can go to my source curve and select the base mesh and maybe grab a point on there and sort of tweak it around to sort of straighten our snake out just a little bit more. But overall, I think it's good. It's certainly good enough for our purposes where we're just going to be doing, um, we're just going to be uh, applying our, our particles here now, right? So pretty cool little trick. Actually, it puts all these spline uh, locators into just into your scene. Very bad management. So let's group them together and call this spline locs. And all right, so let's try to get these points on the surface again. So I'll just close my little stack there. I can hide my curves and I can, uh, I think I could hide this as well. And I'll bring the schematic back up and let's just plug everything back in here. See, I've got my Spheres got to go into the replicator and we'll plug uh, my dex back into the particle source here, my snake into uh, the surface. And let's take a look at turn on the replicator and we'll turn on our um, projection here. So we had this sphere, so we're going to change our projection to a box and then we can just use the transform tools to sort of move this box around like this and like this. And like this, maybe. Cool. So now we've got, let me just get this down a little bit more. If it's going slow, you can always just change your, um, you know, the number of, of points in the scene. We'll put it back to like 100 and interactivity will come back up nicely. Okay, something like this. Okay, and so then we'll change this back to, I don't know what I had, 10,000 of these guys, or 10,000, not 1,000. So now we've got all these scales here. So I actually have a weight map on my snake. So if I select my snake and look at uh, this weight map, I just painted this weight map on the bottom of him. So let's go to V map here. And let me just turn off our replicator so you can see it. So, you know, he's all red except the bottom. So we're going to use that to take those uh, spheres off the bottom and make sure they're just on the top there. You can even, you know, it basically the, it'll, it'll control the size of the, of the dex particles. So if I really want to go in and make them like smaller on the head or around the eyes or, you know, bigger in the middle of the body, I can adjust my weight map like that. But for now, I'm just going to use this as sort of a, just a basic um, way to... Um, just control where these are, right? So I'm not gonna get real detailed with it. So I turn my replicator back on, select my uh, distribution um, node here, and turn on my, I'm gonna use this weight map right here, and I'm also gonna turn my uh, weight, I'm gonna turn my weighted blend to one, hit enter, and that's gonna take them off the bottom and just keep them all on the top here. So I think I need just, I'll just build this out a little more. Maybe we'll do like 20,000. Again, it's just, it's so fast. You can just sort of keep increasing these. 30,000 looks pretty good. Maybe bring the packing up to like eight, uh, the multiplier up. And so, yeah, so this is good enough for our, our purposes, right? You can always keep on packing if you want to. So I've got a snake with a bunch of spheres on it, right? So we'll just, you know, scales for now, right? We'll just use spheres. And we need to color these spheres or these scales in the same color as uh, the snake's UV map. But first, let's like snap our snake back to its regular um, uh, curled up form. So we can do that really easily. We can do a couple things here. First of all, I'm going to press in for a new mesh. I'm gonna call this um, merged particles. And so we're gonna snap our snake back and we're gonna 
put all these particles back with it. And we're going to do that by merging the particles into vertices. And so I'm just going to add a, a mesh merge operation here on this merged particles uh, layer. So merge meshes or mesh merge, I think it's merge meshes. And we're going to merge in our dex particle distribution, service distribution, just like that. And then I'm going to um, just freeze this, right click and say freeze. And so now these merged particles, and if I just isolate them here in the scene, turn on my vertices, there's all these vertices in the scene. And all these vertices have a vertex um, particle map right here, a pea size and transform map that hold all that particle and sizing information from the packing. And we're just gonna use this to um, distribute uh, the spheres with a replicator and also for our coloring with our surface probe, EV surface uh, color node. So I can actually go back to my replicator here and instead of using my surface distribution, I'm just going to use my merged particles as the particle source. This will do two things. One, it'll just um, allow me to deform these particles. Also, it's just gonna be faster. So I'm gonna be able to take out all this calculation out of the scene now. It's already been calculated. Just calculate it once, bake it down into vertices and move on, right? So we've got a replicator now. If I come back here and, and turn off my verts, you know, I've got my replicator. I've got all those guys there and I've got my um, snake, right? So to get the snake back, uh, we're just going to pop open our um, operator here, our operator stack. I'm gonna right click on the snake and I'm going to say freeze. So I just froze that deformation. Now our snake is frozen to this sort of curved deformation here. And I'm going to use the same curves I created earlier to bring the snake back. So I'm going to take the snake and I'm going to add a spline effector just like I did before, but I'm going to reverse the curves. And so the um, number 50 length is the same, Z is the same, hit OK. And over here, I'm going to say for the source curve, I'm actually going to use our target curve, which is the straight one. And for our target curve, I'm going to use the surf curve, source curve, which is the curly one. Now our snake has been snapped back into its original sort of uh, deformed curly position. And I'm going to do the same thing with all those vertices. So what's cool is I can go over here to my vertices, my merged particles. Let me just again package up all these um, particles, or I'm sorry, locators here. So spline locs here. We'll just turn those off so we have to look at them. So let's just go over to the schematic. And we've got our snake, right? Where's our snake? Right here. And if I double click this yellow diamond, I'll see that it's going into um, my spline effector right here, right? Well, this will take multiple inputs. So I can also drag my merged particles in here, or they're already in here actually, at the replicator, and I'm just gonna deform these as well. And so those are gonna snap onto my snake, right? So pretty cool. So we straightened the snake out, we projected the particles on it, and then we snapped, we froze the particles into vertices and we snapped both the snake and the vertices back onto the snake. Um, and, you, and this is live, by the way, so I can actually animate this snake if I want to with this uh, spline effector, do whatever you want. But I thought that was kind of a cool sort of moto-y thing to do. Now let's go into the, um, uh, the UV texture probe and let's grab the colors from the snake's UV map and apply them to all of these different spheres. So again, I did this in part one uh, really slowly and explained everything. So I'm just going to do it rather quickly here. So I need a few nodes. I'm just going to start adding some nodes to the scene. I need a UV texture node, UV texture probe node. Again, that's with the Emmy kit. I need a particles to array node. I need a particle operator node. Oh, not a particle operator, let me delete that. I need an array operator node. Right there, I'm gonna need a um, um, arrays back to particle nodes, array, and I think I have to add that. Again, this is from the Emmy kit, so I think I have to add it from the item list. Steve hasn't figured out how to get it to pop up into the schematic list yet, so array to particles right there, so I've got that. And I'll need a couple other little utility nodes, but this is enough for me to get started sort of putting this all together, right? So we've got our um, particles to array, and that's going to be our merged particles, right? That's gonna go in here, particle source. 
And then we've got our array operator, and that's going to need um, the input from this array right here. And then we've got our UV texture probe right here, and this is going to take. And by the way, if, if like Moto wants to show, um, let me just unhook this really quick. I think I had I have a visibility flag on here now. Maybe not. Uh, I, I don't. So, um, you know, Moto is going to want to show the little um, arrays in the viewport, and I've got 30,000 particles, so it's going to take a minute. So actually, I think I'm going to, I think I'm just going to go full schematic view here so I don't have to um, view, the, uh, uh, view this viewport. Maybe I'll just turn this viewport to um, a preview and leave it blank and then do the uh, schematic over here. There's no quick access for a schematic here. I guess I could add one, but we'll just do this. So again, so we got our particle source array is going to the array operator. Array two particles is going to be way over there. And the middle is going to be our UV stuff, right? So UV needs our triangulated mesh, which is our snake. So we need our snake going into the triangulated mesh. It's already triangulated, so that's good. And we need um, positions, and that's going to be coming from this array operator. We'll get to that in a second. And we need a UV texture, and that's going to be the snake's UV texture, right? It's color texture right here, the snake base. And so that's the UV texture coming in here that we're going to grab those colors from. So for the array operator, we need to grab this element channel and this element channel, the element in and out channels. And I'm going to, if you remember, I'm going to take the, um, both the output and the um, element in channels. I'm going to separate them. I'm going to move them over here on the other side of our UV texture uh, probe. And so I need to do a couple of operators here. I need to get these elements into this position, but I need this vector, um, vector input. So I need a vector three to vector node. And again, if you need to go into the, you know, if, you, if you're just watching this one, you should probably watch the part one first. So one, uh, vector um, three to vector right here. So we're gonna pull in our vector three and we're gonna put out our vector in a position. And then we're going to um, match up uh, UV colors. The probe is going to match up colors to all these positions that we just input in here. Now we're going to output these back to the operator and so we can sort of line these up and put them back into the array. And so I just need the opposite of the vector 3 to vector. I need vector to vector 3. So we're going to go out and then I'm going to go back into this element and then I'm going to output this to the color of our arrays to particles. And we're sort of putting back our particle node together from these arrays, right? If you remember. So I've got colors in my particle. I also want position from my particle. So arrays to particles, this one here, initially was getting the position. So we're just gonna drag that all the way over. Now, I also have, um, I also have scale going on, size, right? So we need to get the size from these, uh, um, the size from this, mer these merged particles as well. If it's held in this VMAP right here this P size V map. And so I just control D duplicate my particles to array. And instead of position, I want to grab, uh, make an array or a list of size like that size. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to drag this output over here and put it into size. Right, and one more is transform, and that's gonna get me the rotations. I don't have rotations on these spheres, but if I want to align them to the normal of the polygons of the snake underneath or something like that, I want those rotations. So if I end up doing that later, I'm going to wanna to have this node ready. So I'm just gonna duplicate one more. I'm gonna change this from size to transform, and I already have it hooked up here. I'm just gonna take that array, and I'm gonna put this array into my arrays two particles in a transform slot. So here we have now a particle node that's getting all these inputs from arrays, it's getting position information, size information, rotational information, and color information. Whoops, this should be in uh, color, not item. Um, like that. And then I'm going to um, put this into the replicator, right? Instead of um, this guy. So let's just go back to our 3D viewport here and see if this works. So right now we've got all kinds, let me just turn off uh, verts here. We've got all of the replicator is getting everything from this uh, uh, merged particles node. So I'm gonna unhook that. Let me just grab these guys and sort of move it to the end of our chain here. 
and see if this works. And so if I plug this in to here and everything, the arrays to particles into the particle source, if I did everything correctly, all those spheres are gonna pop up in the exact same place, the exact same size, exact same orientation. This time they're gonna have color data attached to them. So I'm gonna plug this in like that, hold my breath. Did I do this right? Now it's iterating through 30,000 or so particles in the array, and there they are. So we did everything right. We got all our, our scales in place there. Now we just have to do our shader input trick to get the color right. Now again, I think this is a limitation of the, of the replicator. The replicator should be able to pick up, in my opinion, um, these particle colors here and apply them to um, uh, the replicas. It should just be able to do that. It should all work within the replicator. I shouldn't have to make all this stuff, but it doesn't. So I'm going to add some shader inputs. So I'm going to hit tab. I'm going to do my shader input um, particle sampler node. So type in shader. We want the particle sampler. We'll drag that in. That is going to get um, the particle information from the scene, including the color. So there's my shader inputs. Again, shader inputs will show up over here in the shader tree under nodes. Uh, right there, shader input node right there. And so it's gonna take the rendered image data, it's going to, or sort of a, sort of the render, the, the data that's going to be used to set up the render, it's gonna grab that particle information and it's gonna plug it back into the rendering engine. We're gonna plug it back in to the sphere here. So I'm going to just make a mask for the sphere, just a regular old material mask, a, you know, polygon material mask. And I'm going to add a constant texture here, and this is gonna allow us to, we we'll just make it white, um, deselect the spheres so we don't see in the scene, and drag my constant into the scene, right? So again, this constant is now shading the sphere, okay? But right now it's just making everything white. So if I select my uh, constant and change this to like, you know, whatever purple, they all turn purple, okay? But I'm gonna feed my shader and put particle color information, which it's getting from this node right here, this whole network that just, lined up our particle positions with particle colors. I'm going to plug this in, particle color into color, like that. Now, when I hit F8 and do a preview render, all of those little spheres should be getting the color of this UV map right here. So if I did it right. So let's hit, um, let's go to the camera angle to get a cool angle, something like this. And then I'm gonna hit F8 and go like that. And we'll see what it looks like. And it looks like we did it, okay? So I'm actually going to, let me just um, pop it over here so it's a little bit better for YouTube and squish this over. And so now when I zoom in, all of these replicated um, scales, all these little spheres, are picking up the colors from that UV map, okay? Super cool, so I can go in and I can like, you know, do if I wanted to do like weight maps for the different, you know, I could do like a, a texture to weight um, conversion or something like that to get different weights for the, you know different uh, 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 particle sizes for the patterning or, or whatever. Maybe you're doing textiles and you're doing like um, rhinestones or, or something like that, you know, or beads. Uh, you can use this for all kinds of stuff. Um, the Dex particle packing, all the information, all the different um, attributes and all these different features we have with Dex particle packing, being able to freeze that down in the vertices and retain all that particle data, deform it, like we're deforming it with the snake here, and apply colors from a UV map. It's really advanced um, stuff, and this is the type of thing you would see in, you know, like a Houdini or something like that. We're doing it in Moto, which is really, really pretty cool. And if I don't want to go through this whole rigmarole setup again, I should be able to make a, an assembly preset and save it. And it should be a lot easier for us. So let's see if I can figure out how to do that. Let's just go back to our assembly here. All right, so we don't need to worry about this stuff right now. We're just going to look at our main assembly right here in the middle. And I know it's not super great to view this on YouTube like this, but this is as, as good as we can do it. So what do I need here? Well, we need this whole network sort of in the middle, right? We need an assembly, just like one black box, where we plug in our mesh, we plug in our UV texture, we plug in our particle source, and on the output, we have um, this array of particles, which we could plug into our replicator, right? So we don't want our replicator as part of this network. We don't want our UV map as part of this network because we're going to want to be able to 
plug in whatever UV map we want. We don't want our triangulated mesh as part of this assembly because we want to plug in whatever triangulated mesh we want. And we don't want all of our um, particle sources plugged into the assembly because we're going to want to you know, plug in whatever we want. So what we want in our assembly is all this stuff right here. So we've got all of these selected. I'm going to right click and say create assembly and we'll call this UV color to uh, particles assembly, something like that, call it whatever you want. Call it Sasquatch, I don't care. They all disappeared, where do they go? So let's go back to our little, um, uh, this little icon at the top here. I click that, it shows all the assemblies and workspaces in the scene. I've got one workspace, that's where we just were, and I've got one assembly here. Double click that, that's the one we just made. And here it is, right? So one of the things it did is, remember our um, array operator, we had sort of torn off a couple of channels and, and uh, moved them around just to make it a little bit easier. It, it sort of put that back together. It doesn't matter. We're not gonna have to see this. You see it looks a little tangly. I mean, if you really want to, you can grab these two and say, uh, separate them and put them over here and put this one back over here and you know, it feels all better. Okay, it looks a little more left to righty, right? But what we wanna do is organize our input. So we want um, particle source input for uh, position. And this is for, this one's for position. So we could plug that right in here. So the particle source, we can actually, I wonder if we can rename that. Might be nice to, we'll just call this, uh, can I name this input? That is a good question. Maybe if I just rename the, hmm. Deal with that in a second. <laughs> we want our um, size as well, and we also want our transform, right? We also want our UV uh, triangulated mesh. I think I might be able to just, I wonder if I can just change the order of these by dragging. I really don't know if I can change the order by dragging, but that's okay. We'll just um, also do our UV to texture, right? We want that input there as well. And then on the output side, we want our arrays to particles out. So this is gonna go into the replicator on the output side, right? And so if we go back into our workspace, and I just take this assembly I just made and drag it into our workspace, we go back into here. Here's our assembly. So theoretically, I should be able to take this assembly, plug everything in that I had unplugged, and um, it should all work, right? So I've got my replicator on this side. I've got my texture here, and I've got my mesh okay so i actually don't need i can hide my little spline there so we've got my merged particles are my particle source we've got my texture is my texture source and my snake is my triangulated mesh source so i would like to be able to rename these and honestly i'm not sure how i do that can i rename channels on an assembly, can I? I can rename the assembly. I'll look into that. Maybe somebody in the comments enlighten me. But if I remember right, um, it doesn't really matter because they're all three going to the same one, right? So it's just gonna grab, um, you know, position from this one. It's gonna grab size from this one. It's gonna grab a transform, you know, orientation from this one. It's gonna grab my uh, triangulated mesh from my snake. And it's going to grab my texture base from this uh, texture channel, this texture node right here. And then the particles are going to go here to my replicator on this side. So if I plug this in, I should get my spheres back. And when I hit F8, I should get my shading back if I did it right. So I'm going to plug this in. It's going to iterate through 30,000 particles and all those arrays. It may take a second. So OK, all those popped back into space. Hit F8 and shading looks perfect, okay? So great, so I took that big assembly, which I'm gonna forget how I made by next week, and I packaged it up into an assembly preset, and then I just need to save this guy, right? So right, click and see if I can do it from here, I think I can select this and save as assembly preset, and we'll just do uh, save preset, and it's going to put it in my uh, Moto Content Assets folder. We'll put it in Assemblies. We'll call this, um, just keep it in this well, Mesh Op Assemblies. We'll just call it a UV to uh, UV color to particle color. I think describes it. Hit Save. 
and um, that should now be in our assembly. So let's test that, make sure that works. I'm gonna unhook everything. Like that, I'm gonna select this, I'm gonna remove this node. Now I'm going to add hit um, tab for my preset browser and I'm going to look for assemblies. So I go to assemblies and I look for um, mesh op assemblies right here. I see my UV to particle color one I just uh, created here. I think I can create an icon for it as well, which I don't remember how to do at the, uh, at the moment, but maybe somebody in the comments can add that. I can drag it into my scene here. Once again, I can then add my merged particles to all these guys. Again, if you're using like a surface generator or a dex particle generator or a particle simulation, you just plug them all in. You just plug that purple graph connector in. Here I'm using vertices, it'll all work. Plug in my snake for my triangulated mesh. Plug in my texture base on uh, to the UV texture base um, input there. And then I plug the output to my replicator. Now I'll pop into place and I hit a little F8. And looking good. So now we've got that assembly forever. And whenever I want to do this, I just bring my assembly into Moto and hook it up. I should probably learn how to rename those. I love to get a better icon <laughs> and uh, do some of the other sort of particulars with that, but it, it works. And this is the sort of procedural workflow or pipeline workflow um, that Moto has increasingly been getting better at. And I, I think it's the type of thing that ultimately uh, the people at, at Foundry really want Moto to be super good at. So uh, we're definitely on the way there. So I think this is, a, I know this is a long tutorial and sort of advanced tutorial, but you know, if you made it to the end and you've got this assembly preset now on your hard drive and you've got the Emmy kit, um, you can be able to do some really cool stuff. Yum, yum.